Okay. Um, uh, thanks, Chairman. Uh, this work has been a collaboration between the Basque Country University and University of Con. So, first of all, like because I'm the only one is talking about giant mite impedance, I'm going to give a brief explanation of GMI. GMI is a classical effect in which uh, when we have a soft chromatic material and we apply IC current through it, we have a reduction of the uh, of the of the effective cross sections. And that reduction depends on the uh, frequency, the conductivity, and the permeability. So we can tune the uh, impedance of the sample by just by applying a magnetic field. Um, this is a typical behavior of a sample with a transverse anisotropy, applying a magnetic field along uh, perpendicular to the anisotropy. And we have here that the sensitivity is here in this slope. And we have sensitivity of about 10 ohms per earth at low magnetic fields about 1 ohms these typical ones. So um, for the materials that are used um, normally are the um, traditional materials, are amorphous ribbons, wires that are being rapidly quenched from the melt. So in, with those materials, we have ratios about 800% and sensitivities of 500% per earth and noise levels of about 1 picoteslas per root earth or even lower, depends on the material that we use. However, these um, materials, they are not compatible with the microelectronics devices because you have to fabricate them and then somehow to put it in the sensor. So we decide, and uh, we have been a lot of years trying to improve thin films for GMI and uh, to produce them with this, um, with this uh, microelectronic compatible process. So first of all, we have um, done a lot of studies to improve um, what we call these, um, these sandwich structures in where we have a conducting material surrounded by a, by a conducting, uh, a non-conducting material uh, surrounded by a magnetic material. And we apply these, uh, multi layer structures and we have developed uh, to obtain values of about 250% of change of impedance and sensitivities up to 120% per state. Uh, we have also, uh, doing some studies, um, to perform to reduce the size, uh, we want to compete with the uh, with the mag flux mag magnetometers by reducing its size. So we have pattern different sa sizes with sample. This is the EGMI. These are the electrical contacts, and we have performed this with a uh, small lengths of about half um, half millimeter and uh, widths of about uh, 30 microns, 50 up to 100, and we have performed this. Um, these samples in copper microstrip lines and copper waveguides. This is the area, the better one. Um, so um, the samples that we have used, um, our, and now we want to uh, check which is the response of our sensor. So we now, in this work, we want to measure uh, the noise. So for this um, work, we have prepared several samples uh, in the microstrip lines. Uh, which are samples that are about about they are about one micron in thickness and lengths that go from half millimeter to two millimeters length and widths that go from 50 microns up to 150 microns. This uh, typical behavior of impedance changes about 160 even higher. And we have here uh, that our sensor will work in this part where the sensitivity is maximum. Um, as we can see here, we pre represent here the maximum sensitivity as function of length and the width of the samples. By tuning, by selecting the length and the width aspect ratio, we can increase the, sens the sensitivity. So uh, we measure um, this, uh, the GMI in using microstrip lines. We place a sample here, we place a 50 ohm load in, wheel in one side, and with a network analyzer, we measure for each magnetic field that we apply, the, the impedance by measuring these cutting parameters. We apply magnetic fields up to 150 Hz and with a resolution of 0 0.05 Hz, just yes, with a simple PID. Uh, we make uh, the frequency sweep from 300 kHz up to 300 MHz with a bandwidth of 300 Hz. Uh, once we have characterized our samples, we have done a simple, very this is a prototype, it's quite simple, in which for the GMI we have here the oscillator, we have to use uh, crystal oscillators, we have put an attenuator because all of our measurements um, 
have been done in serial DBN, and we apply too much current, we literally burn our sample. Then we place our sample, and we have um, two different detectors, uh, a test for ADHC uh, 02 from uh, analog devices, a power detector from, from um, mini circuits, and this is a peak detector developed by the group of Professor Doravian, University of Con. Um, in this case, we, uh, the, uh, the detector has an amplifier gain of 500 and offset correction. And for these two, we um, have an amplifier and offset correction add-on. So um, to measure the, uh, the magnetic noise, we have done it in CAN in a special sealed room. So it's a room that is magnetically sealed. So there are no contributions, not magnetic earth, and no electrical currents, anything. So to measure the noise, we apply, we have our sensor, and with a dynamic signal analyzer, we measure the FFT, and we have this typical behavior, uh, one of our samples, with thermal noise and the flicker noise of the oscillator. And this peak is from the excitation that we apply to check that the sensor is working. So the point is that we want, the, with this one, we uh, obtain the uh, density noise, but we want the magnetic noise. To do that, we have to measure transfer noise, so we apply no magnetic fields to the sensor, and we measure the output of the sensor, so we have a transfer function for the sensor, or the sensitivity, so by dividing by the transfer function of sensitivity, we obtain the magnetic noise, obtaining values, typical ones of 2 nanotesla of white noise, and at 1 Hz, about 20 nanotesla per root root Hz. So, uh, first of all, uh, we want to check if our limitation was the sample or the of the sensor. So we use only for this part uh, the, um, the, ana the analog device uh, sensitive part without, without amplification. And we test these samples with different length to width aspect ratio. Uh, as we have the li larger aspect ratio, we have higher sensitivity. As is seen from the transfer function, we measure as we can see that the higher is the aspect ratio, the higher is sensitivity. So once we characterize this, at, we measure the uh, density noise, and we see clearly that there is no difference, not in shape, there are overlap all the samples, which means that from a practical point of view, um, the sample is not the limitation. We have no difference in the uh, electro electronic density noise because of the sample. But if we divide by transfer function, we obtain the magnetic noise, and the difference is due to the different sensitivities of the sample. So our next step was, OK, the sample is not our limitation. We are going to check different, the different detectors. Here I present um, the transfer uh, function of the different for the P detector, for the uh, an analog device sensor, and the mini circuit power detector. So we see there are some difference because of, because of the detectors. However, the slope of the, um, of the curve of the, uh, of the flicker noise and the, um, and the thermal noise is, are quite similar. So which means that um, we think that the noise comes mainly from the oscillator. So if we divide the, this uh, electronic noise uh, by the transfer function, we obtain the magnetic noise. And we obtain that, uh, uh, that, the white, uh, that the white noise, the smallest one, is for the peak detector with values of about 785 picotesla per scoot root at 2 kilohertz. And at 1 Hz, we have 30 nanotesla per scoot root Hz. So we obtain these are good values. However, we want to go a step further. And what we do is to match the sample. The problems of our samples are that have very low resistance, so we have to match it just to detect it to be um, high impedance. By matching just with a sim simple LC uh, circuit, we can uh, increase the uh, transmission through the sample. And we can uh, increase the transfer function just with this matching. Uh, we, uh, we maintain the MA, the magnetic impedance ratio, uh, by, by matching the uh, circuit. So we have uh, increased by, by a factor of 100 the, uh, the, the transfer function with the sample matched and, and matched. So here I present only the noise uh, for the case of the power detector and the big detector. Uh, the electronic noise, there is no, uh, there is no difference with the sample match and uh, match it, as expect. And the uh, magnetic noise is a difference because of we have increased the trans, uh, the sensitivity. So 
that's why we have a difference in the magnetic noise. And for the P detector, the same. We uh, we increase uh, the uh, the we decrease the magnetic noise just by the increase of the transfer function. So we have a reduced the fact, a factor of ten down to twenty and on Tesla per square root earth at one earth down to 0 0.5 and 2 kilohertz for the case of the power detector. And for the case of the P detector, which has the um, uh, the minimum values, uh, the minimum uh, noise, we have gone down at 1 Hz to 3 nanotesla per square root Hz, and values of 122 picotesla per square root Hz at 2 kilohertz. So we conclude that um, the sample is not what limits us, it's the, uh, it's the electronic device, the components. Um, we have obtained a minimum value of 122 picotesla per square root Hz, we think well, we can go easily down to Pico Tesla, even if to Femto Tesla. Uh, so, it w just by in increasing the, uh, by decreasing the uh, noise of the electronics, if we want to reach these values down to Pico Tesla or even lower, we have to uh, reduce the equivalent noise spectral density um, down to the nanovolt uh, nanovolts per square root Earth. Uh, this is what we are working right now, but we. We hope that in a few years we can go even to the uh, femtotesla uh, per square root s. And these are very competitive with magnetometers uh, because we can we have same sensitivities with sizes much, much, much smaller and with co uh, techniques compatible with the microelectronics techniques. Uh, and with this, I finish.